and welcome back again. Uh, today what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about unit testing um, and a few other topics as well. Uh, as a reminder for where we're at in the course, uh, what we're doing right now um, is we're starting to learn more about um, Objective C. Uh, so the assumption is that you came in with nothing in Objective C, so we're learning about that. Uh, we're working with the uh, fraction class. Uh, the reason for this big like re-explanation in this video is in this quarter uh, there was an exam that happened between when we started the fraction class and now. So I usually like to give a little reminder uh, when people have a big gap between what we're doing. So we're working with this fraction class. Um, as a reminder with what we've done so far with the fraction class is we've made the initializers, right? So we've been making the init method. Uh, we made three init methods. Uh, we overrode the default init. Uh, we made a designated initializer, uh, which is this one here, which takes all the parameters. And then we made another initializer. Uh, we also made various class methods. Uh, we made a convenience class method uh, to initialize any fraction. And then we also made three more convenience methods uh, to initialize a fraction for 1 over 1, 0 over 1, and negative 1 over 1. Um, we use two uh, <coughs> IVARs in this class, uh, both of type NS integer. Um, and NS integer, as a reminder, it's just defined as being either a long um, or as an int, depending on the target that you're using. So it looks at the target and it picks the most appropriate size variable for that target. Um, and so this is just, you could use int just as easily or long just as easily. Um, but it's here so that whenever there's like a 64-bit iPhone, um, you don't have to change your code. You can just say NS integer, and it'll just use the most natural type uh, for that target. Uh, so looking in at uh, the different things that we did, uh, most of the work was actually in the designated initializer. This is where we did all of the reducing of the fraction, uh, the greatest common divisor. Um, and then all these conveniences were all pretty simple, right? So these are all auto-release conveniences. Uh, so if we look at how, um, <clears throat> how our code works, you can see that we made a couple that we initialized, um, then we made a couple with our convenience class methods. Uh, so this is where we're at. So this is where we're coming from. What we're going to start doing today is we're going to start adding some um, instance methods. Uh, we're going to be running those instance methods, and then we're going to set up a unit test to make sure that they're all working. So unit testing um, is a topic that some people love and some people hate. Uh, there's almost nobody in between. Um, I guess somehow or another I'm one of the people who loves it. Um, some people will say that unit testing is a big old waste of time because it takes time to make the test, it takes time to maintain the test. And for graphical stuff, I kind of think they're right. Uh, but for model objects, I really like unit testing, so I think it's got a real place um, in iOS development. So we're going to talk about it because, well, I like it. Before we can test them, we got to make some methods, though. Actually, that's not true. Some people do test uh, first development, but I don't do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start making some methods. So we're going to make uh, two methods, uh, one called uh, ABS, uh, the other one called um, negate. So the first thing I want to do is I want these to be publicly available methods. Uh, things you can see from the signature line, uh, first you can see that it starts with a, a dash, so it means it's an instance method, it'll act on an instance. Um, it's going to return a pointer to a fraction object, so it's going to return a pointer to a fraction object. And if you look at the name, the name does not include the word alloc, it does not include the word copy, um, and it does not include um, retain, I think is the other one that you should look for. Um, or new, new, that was the, that was the word, alloc, uh, copy, or new. Since it does not contain one of those words, um, if you use this, it will create an object that you are not responsible for. So it's going to actually create one um, in the auto-release pool. So let's go ahead and write these first, just so we get some practice. Uh, the goal is, um, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and organize it uh, reasonably. The goal is for negate uh, to simply invert the sign, um, and for ABS just to make it positive. Um, these are fairly straightforward to write uh, once you kind of know what you're doing, but you're new to the language, so we'll just kind of do it together. 
So what we want to do is we want to actually create a new fraction object, right? So fractions are immutable, so you can't change a fraction. Um, and since you can't change it, that means if we want to create um, an ABS, we're going to have to create a new fraction object. Um, and it's going to be in the auto-release pool. And the reason it's in the auto-release pool is that the person who calls this method should not take ownership of it. Uh, so for that reason, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new fraction using the convenience method. So I'm going to use the fraction with numerator and fraction with denominator. Uh, this one is pretty straightforward. Um, there's a function in the C language just called ABS. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're just going to take our numerator, uh, we're going to take the ABS of it, uh, then our denominator um, will already be positive. This will create the fraction so this is such a short function that we can do it in a single line of code, right? So what we've done here is we've created a new fraction. Um, if you want to jump to this method, you can hold down Command and double click on it. It'll go, it'll go to it. So it's created a new fraction. Um, it's using um, the auto-release pool already because it's using this convenience method to create it. Um, and then it's returning it and it's got a positive numerator. We can do a pretty simpler, similar task with negate. Uh, the only difference with negate is instead of doing an ABS, uh, we just want to do a minus. Uh, you can actually get rid of the parentheses if you like as well. Um, so let's go ahead and test these things. So we've got these two functions written. Uh, you can hit Command B to make sure you don't have any typos. Uh, and then to test them, what we want to do is we just want to uh, print out little log messages here. Uh, so let's pick a positive number and a negative number uh, to do an ABS and negate on. Uh, let's just take F1 and F2. So let's say F1 negate um, is equal to percent at. So if we called F1 negate, um, it'll print out what it is. And then if we did a ABS, of F1 and then we'll do the same thing with F2 just so we can show that one is uh, always taking the negative and then the other is the absolute value. So if we put in these four tests uh, to test our negate and ABS methods you can see that we call it by saying um, on this object um, pass this message negate um, it will make a new fraction object that fraction object is in the auto release pool already, so you don't even have to maintain a pointer to it. You can just print it um, and move on with life. If you hit Command Enter to run this thing, and then Command Shift R to bring up the debug window, um, you can see that I did something wrong. <laughs> I made a classic error. Um, let's look at what it's doing, and I'll explain my error in in detail. So you can see it's not doing what we want. Um, if you look at F1 and F2, this is a great error, I, sh I should have done this intentionally. Um, if you look at F1 and F2, it's printing out negative 7, 7, negative 7, 7 for both F1 and F2. Um, if you look at F1 and F2 though, they should be 3 fourths and negative 2. Um, where did it get this 7 from? Well, it got this 7 from F3. What, <laughs> what, on, earth is, what on earth is that all about? What happened here is this. Um, if you look at F1, we allocked it. That gave it a retain count of 1. We used it for stuff, and then we released it. Um, this brought its retain count to 0. This shows how important memory management is. At this point, the object that F1 points to um, got removed from the system. So it's, it's removed from the system. Same thing with F2. It got removed from the system. At this point, F1 and F2 still point to a location in memory, but who knows what's there. So that's what's happening here, is they're pointing to a location in memory, um, and it turns out the thing that's in memory, just crazy enough, um, it looks like F3 got put into that location in memory. Um, how it's in there twice, that's a mystery to me. Uh, but the problem is that we can't use a variable um, after we release it, because the system reclaims it. Um, 
So, awesome example of memory management. Um, totally accidental. Um, so, at this point, now I fixed it. So I moved their releases down below. So now I've made them. They're in memory. Um, I'm using them. Um, and then I'll release them after I'm done with them, right? So um, had released them a little early uh, for that example. Let's look at this again. So now F1, uh, which was 3 fourths, you can see if we negate it, it becomes a negative 3 fourths. If we take the absolute value of it, nothing really changed. It's still a positive. Um, whereas a negative value, so negative 2, so F2 was negative 2. Negating it uh, gives you 2. Taking the ABS gives you 2. Um, you can see that ABS and negate both work, um, and they do different stuff. Cool, so that is um, an introduction to writing instance methods um, on a fraction class. Um, the important thing that I want you to take home is that um, instance methods like this return an auto-released object uh, because they do not contain the words alloc, copy, or new. Let's, say, let's make some more instance methods. Oh, and in the slides there's a solution to what these should look like. And a description of how you might use them. Here I use different numbers, but it's the same idea. You can see in the slides I did it right. Right, I released them after the fact. Let's make some more. So the additional ones we want to make um, are add, subtract, multiply, and divide. You'll notice that we picked a, a naming convention that says fraction by adding. The reason we did this is we wanted to be consistent with some of the other Apple documents. Um, so for example, if we look up some of the things that they do, NSDate um, has a similar method. Um, and I think NSDates is kind of interesting. Um, so NSDate has um, <laughs> this function. This is funny. So NSDate, they wanted to add to the date. You can see that they used to make a function called add time interval. Um, they realized that that was inconsistent with their other naming conventions, um, so they changed it to date by adding time interval. Um, so you can see it's a subtle difference. The reason they do this form is because they want it to match with the convenience method. So you can see the convenience method I'll say like date with something. And anytime a method starts with the class name but lowercase, it usually means it's giving you a new auto-released object. So you can see they deprecated this one. Um, and I think that the only way, the only reason they deprecated it is just because it didn't fit the naming convention, right? So it got deprecated and they used this one. Um, this is comical because when I first made this example, I just called it add. Um, and then I'm like, oh, I should use the new one. And I looked, I found date and I just thought it was funny. All right, so this is the naming convention you should use. Uh, kind of got off topic there. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to start uh, implementing these. Uh, so if we want to start implementing these, we start off by copying um, all the function signatures into the implementation file. Uh, next thing I do is I get rid of the uh, semicolon and I replace it with curly braces uh, to implement it. Uh, so we're going to do a similar thing. Uh, we're going to create a new fraction. Um, and we're going to go ahead and use the convenience uh, class method to create an auto-release fraction. Um, and now we're about to run into a problem. So right now, um, in order to add a fraction, um, what I need to do is I need to create a like denominator. Um, the way you create a like denominator is you take um, the denominator of the first fraction um, and multiply it by another fraction's denominator. So like that's, that's what this is going to look like. Um, and then the way you get the numerator, um, we can talk about the math on that. But, but first I want to focus on this. Um, here I said um, denominator, so that's going to be the denominator of this object because it's, um, <clears throat> it's the I of R for this class. Um, and then we're saying that's getting multiplied by another object's denominator. This is going to fail, right? So we're using the dot denominator. This is using a property, so it's assuming that a property exists. The, so we, we need to do something to get the denominator for another fraction. Um, so we need to have some public way um, of getting that value. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a property. Uh, properties, uh, as you know, can have many values. 
Uh, the one I'm going to put in here first is wrong, um, and then I'm going to correct it. So the properties you've seen so far have typically been this, non-atomic retain. Non-atomic means if it is um, thread safe or not. For most things we've done with GUIs, we're not using threads, we say non-atomic. However, if you make a class that might get reused by who knows what, maybe they will have threads. So if you want it to be thread safe, just take out the word non-atomic. Um, so I'd like for it to be thread safe, so I'm going to take out the word non-atomic. And then the next thing that we usually see is the word retain. Well, retain has to do with the retain count of objects. NS integer is not an object. So saying retain is completely invalid, right? Um, so you might say assign, copy, or retain, um, but none of those um, are used when it's a primitive, right? So we should get rid of that. So we could just, um, just say at property, um, the type, and the numerator, and that would be fine. If we did that, though, um, somebody could change it, and the goal was to make this class immutable. So if we don't want somebody else to change it, we say that it's a read-only property. So we want a read-only property. Um, and so we're going to make a read-only property for the numerator and the denominator. Uh, just to mention it, in the next the next example we'll do, you might see the syntax where people make their IVARs with an underscore. Um, we'll talk about that in the next example. So if you've seen that, don't worry about it yet. We'll get to it next time. Um, for this example, we're just going to do it nice and normal. The IVAR name, the property name will be the same. Next thing we need to do with a property is we need to synthesize it. So we'll come in here and we'll synthesize our properties. Uh, you can synthesize them each on their own line, or you can just add a comma and put them all together. I'll just put them all together. The other thing you should think about is you should think about uh, the dialic method, right? So inside our NS objects overrides, I'm going to add a dialic. I actually wish, um, oops, something's wrong because it's, uh, <clears throat> it's putting me way over. I was going to see if I could find it before the compiler told me what I was doing wrong. Um, you always know something's wrong whenever it uh, whenever it does this. Let's, I'm going to hit Control B and see what I did wrong here. I can't really find it. Expect expression before less than symbol. Oh, <laughs> I haven't finished writing this. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, just to get the compiler off my back, um, I'm going to temporarily return nil for all of these. Yeah. All right, I'm going to comment this one out. <laughs> Hit Control B. Uh, is the compiler happy? All right, the compiler's happy now. Now it'll let me like auto indent, um, not like a drunk person. All right, back on point. Um, I wish that in the template, even for an NS object, I wish that it would put in this dialic method for me because if it's not here, I totally forget about it. Now it turns out that for this for this class, there is no reason to um, release the IVARs because they're primitives, right? There's no retain here. Um, so it turns out for this class, we didn't need to make dialic, but I think it's a good habit to always put it in there. Um, and I wish that the default template would, because you'll forget if you don't if you don't see it, you'll just totally forget to dialic your stuff. Um, but Anytime I make a synthesis, I think about dialic. In this case, all we need to do is synthesize them. There's no view did unload. There's no dialic. Um, we're just going to synthesize them. Whew. So we had to do all that. I'll catch up my slides here. Um, we had to go ahead and make those properties um, and synthesize them just so we could write this function, right? Just so that we had a way to access um, that other function. Um, and then the code for addition... Um, now we're kind of into 8th <coughs> grade geometry, right? No, not even 8th grade. Um, much younger grade, uh, working with fractions. Is in order to get um, the numerator, we take this one's numerator times the other's denominator and add this one's, the other one's numerator times this one's denominator. Um, you can see that now instead of just saying the word numerator, you can actually say self.numerator. Uh, that's because we've got that read-only property. Um, 
So most places where you're, or any place where you're reading it, you can say self dot uh, because it is um, it is read only. Just to mention it, you can't just do it everywhere though, because like here you're setting it right. So if I tried to add them here, uh, the compiler would yell at me because it would say that property is read only, right? You can't use it. You can't use it to set it. Um, and so anywhere where you're reading it, you can say self dot, and that's fine. Um, and I have a typo somewhere. Um, oh, I suppose it wants me to actually finish this line of code. Uh, closing bracket, semicolon. So at this point, we've written the add function. Uh, let's go ahead and test add. Um, so see if you can. I I always want you to pause the pause the video. Can't talk. Um, and see if you can do these things by yourself, because that's really how you learn. Um, so see if you could do addition by yourself. All right, let's do it together. Hopefully you paused it and tried it. Um, so if we wanted to print out, let's just say F1 plus F2, then we can say um, on F1, make me a new fraction by adding F2. Um, and so if we do this, it should be um, three-fourths plus a negative two. Um, I picked a complex one. Um, that should be a negative, what, five-fourths? Well, I got a, got a complex example in here. Um, so you can see if you uh, take those two and you put them together, um, you get a negative five-fourths. Um, I might pick uh, pick something easier just so I don't have to think about doing the math. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we want to do all the different things. Um, if we wanted to say F1 minus F2, F1 times F2, F1 divided by F2, um, we should be able to uh, write the code, or sh you should be able to go write the code uh, to make all of this um, add up. So go ahead and take a minute and see if you can make that happen. I'll figure out what the answer should be. All right, so hopefully you uh, went and wrote some functions. We'll write them together. Um, I went ahead and typed in what I think the answer should be. Um, again, I wish I'd pick some easier things. Um, but I think that they should be um, 11 fourths for this one, negative 3 halves, negative 3 eighths. You can see that it's really nice how um, we're using... Um, you know, a convenience method, um, and so then that convenience method is using um, the designated initializer, and then the designated initializer takes care of the reducing the fraction for us, so we don't have to worry about it. But it's kind of nice to kind of stack one thing on top of another, uh, because it can become a really easy way uh, to get through um, creating more complex tasks, right? So if we were writing these things, uh, the next one we need to write is fraction by subtracting. Uh, there's actually a clever way you could do this one if you thought to do it. You could actually use the add method uh, to help you uh, create this one. So if you use the fraction by adding um, and you just add on the negative of another fraction, uh, that should make that one work out. Uh, for multiplying, uh, I'm a big cheater. Uh, for multiplying, what we need to do is we need to multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. That one works pretty easy. And then again, bringing back those, uh, those math skills from an uh, earlier day, uh, dividing by it, um, you can kind of flip the bottom one over and just multiply the numerator times its denominator, um, and then the denominator times the other one's numerator, order, um, <laughs> you know, make sure you get it all right. Uh, I'll assume that you can get the math skills. We're, we're worried about Objective-C skills here. So if everything is together um, and my predictions uh, for what they should be were correct, um, we should have um, a negative 5 fourths when we add them, an 11 fourths when we subtract F2, a negative 3 halves, and a negative 3 eighths. Um, so hopefully you were able to predict what they would all be um, and hopefully all your predictions came true. So what we've been doing here is we've been writing instance methods um, and then we've been like trying to um, test them by using a main method. This is a, a, an acceptable way to test your methods. 
but there is a whole another world out there uh, called unit testing that is used to test your methods. Uh, hopefully you watched the uh, Stanford video by now um, about unit testing um, and they, they gave you an introduction uh, to unit testing. Um, there's a video here where in the first 32 minutes they talk about it. Um, but unit testing uh, I think is best learned by doing an example. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna make an example. The unit testing kit is called OC unit. Um, OC unit is built on top of the I think it's the sin testing kit. I think it's actually Sente or something like that. I forget what it is. Uh, the sin testing kit. In order to do unit testing um, in Objective-C, what you actually need to do is you need to make a new target. Um, so probably up until now you've never made a new target, so this will be something new. So let's make a new target. So right click on the targets and say add new target. So a target is a collection of, um, of information to the compiler that says how it should go about building your product, right? So how should it use your source files and how should it make your new product. And so the target that we're going to make is what's called a unit test bundle. Uh, you can see that for this application we're actually doing a COCA Mac OS um, command line tool. Um, so we're, it, we're working in the Mac OS. When we start doing apps there's also an app unit test bundle. Uh, but let's use the one for COCA because that's what we're doing right now instead of COCA touch. So you can see that this is the target uh, for uh, the OC unit. And let's just call it fraction uh, test target. Including the word target is kind of unnecessary because it is a target, but since this is all new to you, it probably seems like a fine name. Um, so unit test target. So now we've made a new target. The next thing we want to do is we want to set it to be the active target because Making a target doesn't do anything unless it's the active target. A couple places you can set it as the active target. The easiest is the drop down list here. Um, you can just select it here and you can see the yellow or green check mark is on it. You could have also done it from setting the active target and selecting it here. So now it's the active target. Before we can run um, a unit test, we also need uh, the source files that have the actual test in them. So let's go ahead and make some new files uh, for testing. Also for organizational purposes, I'm going to make a new group uh, called unit test. Um, and then I'm going to make the new files in this group. Groups are nothing on the hard drive. They just, they're, they're for visualization within the project um, for how you can organize things. So the type of template that we want, um, you can see for iOS there's a thing called Objective-C um, test case class. We're going to use the one that's down in the Mac world. Um, so we want an Objective-C test case class. Um, you can see that it's for um, OC unit test um, and it includes the SIN testing kit um, headers uh, for that framework. So this source file we're going to call fraction test. Fraction test um, does not need to be part of the main target. We want it to be part of the fraction test target. So we want it to be part of this target. So I'm going to go ahead and make this new file and put it into this target. It's not in the, it's not in the, the other target. All right, so now we've got a new, um, a new class um, called fraction test. And the way this works is um, there's a header file, and then if you hit um, Option Command Up, you can go to the implementation file. The way this works is in the implementation file, you're going to make test. So I'm going to start off with a really basic test, just so you can see what uh, what it work or how it works. Um, and I'm going to make an assert equals, um, and I'm going to say one plus one is not. Um, if you make a, uh, a unit test inside um, the, uh, the app version, it'll put this one in there for you. And I think it says the compiler is not feeling well today or something like that. So what we're doing here is this. Um, we made a function um, that started with the word test, so test something, um, and then it's going to run all the tests that are in there. 
We use this ST, this stands for sin test case. We used an assert equals test, and we're testing to see if this first thing on the left is equal to this thing on the right. Um, if it is not, ooh, I forgot my at symbol, that would have been bad. If it is not equal, then it'll print this message uh, to let you know that it, that it, that it failed. Um, so now if you hit control B, um, you can see that it builds. Um, hitting, sorry, I meant to say command B. Um, hitting command B is how you run your unit test. You don't actually have to run it, you just have to build it, and that'll run the unit test. The one trouble is um, it doesn't say anything to me. It's like, well, did that work? Did, did anything useful happen there? Um, I don't know. Um, so what I like to do is I like to see it fail, um, and then that's that's a way I can kind of know that it tests. Ah, so it, it did run um, because it says right here that when I tried to build it, it said it failed in the build, um, and the reason it failed is because 1 plus 1 is not 2. Um, so I had just changed that, so I'm going to put it back now. Um, you can also, you can always open this by looking at the uh, the build results. Um, so it's uh, shift command B. So if you build it, um, you can bring that up with shift command B. Um, and it says build succeeded, so you know it succeeded. I actually, I run into this problem a lot where I'm worried about the test case actually running. Um, so if I'm if I'm worried about them actually running or not, I usually do this. It's kind of lame, but it's what I do. Is I make a first test called, um, you know, like test that things are running. And anytime I'm worried that things aren't, that it's not really running my test, I just uncomment that line and I make sure it crashes. Um, and then I comment it out um, to actually run my test. But I usually, you'll see something like this at the top of most of my unit tests, just because it doesn't. It doesn't give me a warm, fuzzy feeling when my tests succeed. Um, so I like that warm, fuzzy feeling. So um, this is showing an example um, that's independent of any other classes. Um, that's pretty worthless, right? So we want to actually test things um, that are testing something in our, in our project. So what, we're, what we need to do is we want to test the fraction class. So the first thing that we do is we need to import uh, the header file, uh, which, is, which is an important step. So now we can work with the fraction class. We also need to do another important thing. Um, if you look at the target um, in, this, in this test, you can see what all, by clicking on the project, you can see what all um, files are included in this target. If we want to test it, um, we sure better include it in this target. So find the row that it's on and click the check mark. Um, now it's included in this target. Um, so it's included in this target and then we include the header here. Enough repeating myself, let's do something with it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to um, test our initializers. So we want to go through and we want to make some tests uh, for the different initializers that we've got. Um, so let's go ahead and let's try to make a fraction uh, just to kind of make, make sure everything's working. Uh, we'll use our designated initializer. Um, so we'll just make a fraction. Let's just make like three-fourths or something like that. And then what I want to do is I want to use, um, I want to assert that it's not nil as my first test. Um, and we'll say fraction was nil, which is bad if it happens. And then I like to get in a good habit of memory management, even, in my, in, even inside my unit test. Um, so I'll release it after the fact. Um, so there is this function called not nil. I'm going to see if it works first, and then I'll talk about it more. Um, if you do a control B, um, you can see that it runs, um, and it should it should be okay. Um, I always again I always get worried that my test didn't run, so I I make it fail. Um, so if I made it fail, it says it it should be true, um, but then it, it prints out nil. So if I so I wanted to make sure that it's not nil. Um, how did I know that this existed? Um, where am I getting these magic um, things that turn brown? Uh, what these are is they are actually macros. Um, so a macro is kind of like it's a 
pound to find. Um, it's a preprocessor macro. Um, one way to see what all the different ones are is you can actually just hold down Command and double click on one of them. As long as you know one, you can find the others. And if you look up how is it defined in the send test case .h file, um, you can see that there's a whole bunch of them uh, that we might use, right? Um, so there's a whole bunch of these things that we might, might end up using. Uh, there's almost too many, it feels like. You can see that there's an assert nil and an assert not nil. So they receive one parameter, um, and then you can put in a description. Um, note this dot, dot, dot. This means, this means that it works like nslog. It's a formatted print string. So you could actually use a formatted print string just like nslog, which is handy. So there's a assert that it's nil or that it's not nil, um, a true and a false. Uh, there's three with equals. Um, so there's equals objects. This is when you want to compare two objects. Uh, we'll get into that here in just a little bit. There's just plain old equals, um, which is for primitives. And then there's an equals with accuracy. Uh, this is useful when you're doing something with like a float or a double, um, where it's, it's one of the approximated primitives. Um, so you kind of need this in it with accuracy. Then the rest of them, um, <clears throat> Objective-C has the ability to do exception handling and to throw exceptions. Most people don't use it, to be honest. Um, and, well, most people don't use unit testing either, but I use that, but I, I don't do any exception handling in, in Objective-C. Um, if you really want exception, exception, exception handling, become a Java programmer. They use it all the time. The one I do occasionally use is I use this stfail. Um, so you can see that was uh, that was how I made this one, right? So that's how I knew ST fail. ST fail is funny because um, it just fails no matter what. Usually, where you see ST fail is for a placeholder. So some people say ST fail, and then it'll print out the message not implemented. Um, so before you implement something, sometimes people stub those in. Um, I only use it for this little this little trickery. Cool, so this is uh, the basics of um, unit testing. Um, you can see that here we test in math, and um, in the slides I've got the major ones you use, nil, not nil, true, false, the three equals, and then fail. So these are the ones that I actually use, the macros you should come to know and love for unit testing. Let's do um, a slightly more complex one. And let's let's uh, let's learn a little bit more. So we can make sure that it's not nil, um, and we should be able to run this, um, and it should run happy now. And now I went ahead and stuck in a slightly more complex something. Um, I stuck in, um, oops, I have the name F1 multiple times. Um, ooh, I picked the same value though. So here's what I'm going to do. I, I cleaned it up a little bit to make all my code go together nicely. So I make F1, I make sure it's not nil, um, and then I went ahead and did a, a few more tests on it. Um, I assert that the numerator is equal to 3. Um, I should have let this crash first and then shown you how to fix it. I made sure the numerator is 3. You can see here that I typecast this as NS integer. Let me comment out these and I'll run this test. If you didn't have this, if you just said 3, which is probably what you did the first time, because it's what I did the first time, and you can run it. Um, oops. First, get, get my comments out to where I can run it even. Um, you get this message that says type mismatch. Um, so it says type mismatch. Now, the reason for this is because whenever you just say the value 3, um, the compiler gets to pick uh, what type of primitive, primitive it is. Um, and it would appear as though that it's picked a different type. Um, I think what it does is it picks a long, um, whereas my NS integer in this case is a uh, int. Um, things like that are, are kind of annoying, um, but it's important uh, to know um, to juror. It's important to know that the objects are the same type of object, right, and that they match in every way. Um, because, you know, one takes up more memory than the other, and it's important to get the details. So if you want to avoid the type mismatch, we can just typecast the three to an NS integer. Uh, now they're the same type. So this is using the equals method for primitives. Let's go uh, one step further. Um, and let's make a second object called F2. Um, so if you can imagine in your mind uh, the memory, it's 
creating a new spot on the heap, so it's a different object on the heap. The pointer F2 is pointing to that new object on the heap. Um, and so what we're going to do here is we're going to use the equals objects, um, and we're going to see if F1 is the same as F2. Um, if they are not the same, it'll print this message. Um, so what do you think it's going to do? Do you think it's going to be um, OK, or do you think it's going to crash and burn? Um, hit Command B, and let's see. Um, the correct answer is crash and burn. So we are seeing if these two objects are the same. Um, in order to see if two objects are the same, what it does under the hood is it uses the is equals method. Is equals is defined on NS object. Log in again. That's what you get if you start using a beta version of stuff. You don't, you don't, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> um, just kidding. Um, I am using the 4.2 beta, but it's not really that much different than what's publicly available, so hopefully nobody cares. Um, if you look at um, NS object, uh, there should be an is equals, ah, is equal, there we go. The is equal, um, <clears throat> what it does is it sees if they are pointing to the same object. So what this test is doing is it's calling this is equal method. Uh, but since it hasn't been implemented, um, the best case scenario is it'll use the superclasses. Um, and the only thing the superclass might do is it might look to see if it's pointing to the same object. What we need to do is if we want to use equals objects, we're going to have to override the is equals method. So into the NS object overrides, um, we're going to put... Um, the is equal um, method. You can see that the is equal method returns a bool, so it's going to return whether it's true or false, um, yes or no. And what it takes is it actually takes an id um, of an object. Since it's an id, you could actually pass any type of object to it. Um, so there's a little bit of boilerplate code that checks to even make sure that it's a fraction. Um, I'm not overly worried about that, so I'll just, I'll just have you copy the boilerplate push portion of the code. Um, so what we're doing here is the first thing we're doing um, is we're going to check to see if it is a fraction. Um, actually, the first thing we do is we say, um, is this pointer um, pointing to the same place that self is pointing to? So they're a pointer to a place in the heap. Um, if they're pointing to the same place, just return yes. Don't even look at it, just return yes. Um, the next thing it does is it checks to see if the object is nil. So if, if an object is nil, um, then it's never going to be the same. So that's just a, it's a little thing. If, if this one is nil, it's going to return no. So if it's, if it's, not, uh, if it's not created, um, then return no. Also return no if it's not um, the same kind of class as self. Um, so this is a cute little thing. There's is kind of class, and then there's also one called is member of class, uh, which is kind of neat. Um, and what these do is they're very similar but slightly different different task. Um, is kind of class uh, will tell you where to go. I forgot to jump to. Um, so is kind of class says if it's that class or a subclass. Is member of class has to be that exact class. Um, so it has to be either this class or a subclass of it. Um, two slightly different, very similar things there. So if it's not of type fraction, return no for that as well. If you succeeded, if you got past those, um, then what we're going to do is we're actually going to do the comparisons of the numerator and the denominator. So once we've made it past those tests, um, we can safely say that it's a fraction. Uh, what I like to do is I just like to typecast um, the pointer um, to a fraction style pointer. That way I can call functions on it without compiler warnings. Um, so here instead of saying an object, I say it's the other fraction. And I just compare. Is the numerator of self and other fraction the same? And the denominator the same? Since it's reduced, that's the only thing you have to check. Um, if those are both true, um, then it will return is equals of yes. So if we hit Command B now, 
um, we can see that our test actually runs um, and gets through everything successfully. Um, if you want to make sure your tests are running, same game as before, comment him out. Yep, they're definitely running. Um, so I've now made it to where um, is equals um, is written um, and it's getting things going. Uh, there's more to do, uh, but because your head is probably about to explode, um, we're going to cut this video lecture off um, and we will pick up from next time. If you would like to, on your own, uh, try to uh, make some tests, um, it's great to try to do things on your own. See if you can write a test for um, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Um, so you've got your own little like video homework assignments. Um, and next time we'll pick up, uh, we'll start writing some more of these things. Uh, we'll learn more about unit test. Um, and we'll also do a few more uh, little things with the fraction class. Enough for now. Um, look forward to seeing you next time.